Rob Schreier here on Volcanoes TV alongside with Kathy Hadley preparing for our Oregon Agriculture Week coming up. Uh, we're here on your farm here in Rick Real. Uh, I'm just looking around your farm. There's a lot of different uh, kind of equipment. Tell us about your operation, just you know, what's on your uh, piece of property here. Yeah, so um, like a lot of the farms in the Willamette Valley, we're very diversified. Um, we do a bunch of different kinds of grass seed. Um, some of that's for pastures and some of that's for like turf like lawns or like what you guys have at the Volcano Stadium. Um, we actually just finished combining some canola, which is an oil seed. It's like the canola oil you'd find in the store. Um, we do grains, wheat, oats, uh, we've got some triticale. Um, hay, and we've got beef cattle, about 30 head that we do grass-fed beef. Take me back to uh, you grow up on, growing up on the farm and um, what was that like and you know who did you work with and just kind of how did you start and get your roots in, in agriculture? Once I was old enough I just came up to the farm with my dad every day. Um, to a little kid it's pretty dang cool getting to ride in tractors and so of course you want to drive them next and um, you know, we used to, dad would build hay forts for me in the trailer when we'd go feed the cows and I had all sorts of hay forts in the barn here behind us when I was younger. Um, as far as actually being more involved with the farm, when I got older and into FFA, I started um, actually having some fields of my own as an FFA project. Um, and that's turned into, you know, I have um, a couple hundred acres that are my um, own, I guess, operation and then my dad has um, about 650, but we, we kind of manage it all together. What in particular makes Oregon agriculture, more specifically Mid Willamette Valley agriculture, what is, it, what, what is unique about this area in terms of uh, what you grow or what you do? What allows us to grow so many different crops here in the Mid Valley is the climate. Um, we have plenty of moisture, but then you get to this time of year and it's beautiful and dry. And, you know, for the most part, stays pretty dry and allows you to have really you know good chunks of harvest um, a lot of other areas either have thunderstorms or um, or just don't get this warm consistently and dry the rainfall during the growing season is really important um, and then not having to deal with the really cold temperatures really helps we just have a lot more growing days here this area is well known for several different uh, different crops and obviously you have some direct experience in, in, in working with those. Yeah, so the grass seed is the big one as far as what I produce um, that is definitely the Willamette Valley is well regarded for. As far as other crops that are grown here, um, it's Oregon's getting to be known for a pretty big production center for blueberries. Um, hazelnuts is bit, is huge here. Um, we are the primary growing area in this in the U.S. for hazelnuts and one of the few worldwide. So we produce a huge amount of the world's crop of hazelnuts here. For the the citizen, the resident that is very much urbanized in Salem and Kaiser, potentially Portland and others, is there a message perhaps is something that they're missing or they're not aware of? You know, we're out here doing everything we can to produce the best safest, healthiest products we can for people. Um, I think there's been a lot of concern and skepticism over um, what people perceive to be, you know, large corporate farms. Um, in the reality, the vast majority of farms across this country, and particularly in Oregon, are family owned. We're raising stuff to feed our kids and, and to support our families, and we're trying to do that in the very best way possible for um, for the people that are going to consume it and for the environment. I mean, if we don't take care of the land, it's not going to take care of us. So um, we are extremely environmentally conscious in what we do. Um, and then I guess I'd just say too, most of us are, are more than happy to help educate people about our farms. We are right around harvest, which is like our craziest, busiest time of the year, the super long days. Um, we're going to be on the roads a lot with equipment, so I just put out a, a plea for everyone, you know, from especially from now through like October, just watch out for farm equipment and um, and just understand that it's big, it doesn't always have the best visibility, and we go slow. Hello, I am Joelle Zelian and with the Volcanoes TV alongside Brenda Furkitich. She is a third generation farmer for the Kirsch Family Farms. Brenda, tell me about your family and how the farm got started and what did you see your experience as a kid and what was your role as a kid when you were growing up? Uh, so my grandpa and his brother started the farm 
and they started doing a lot of custom work and then slowly accumulating more land. Once my dad came onto the farm, um, he decided to add more irrigation to our land and continue to buy up pieces that we've been farming for years. And then as I came on, I started adding more of the technology that's come about. So the great thing is it's been a real like merriment of tradition and legacy, but also kind of looking towards the future and ways that we can diversify our farm and utilize new technology from, um, you know, or technology from the past and then technology from the future and, and really use it to our advantage to continue on our, our legacy to the next generation. We grew up around it. It's something that has been in our blood forever. And so I ended up not wanting to farm originally. And I went to college and I got a business degree and I just realized that, you know, what we have here is a true business. It's something that, you know, I want to pass on to my kids and the values that I learned growing up on a farm were things that were just really important to me. And so when I decided to come back, um, I came back as an intern and uh, my dad gave me a two year internship to try it out and see if I really enjoyed enjoyed the lifestyle because it really is a year round, you know, 24 seven kind of life. And it turns out I loved it. Um, my husband has started farming with us in the last two years and he really enjoys it also. So we're pretty much living our dream of, you know, being the, the family farm and being able to live where we work and really raise our kids in the same way that I was raised. And what type of things do you farm in? I mean, what makes your farm unique to Oregon agriculture and to everyone else? We raise nine different crops on our farm, so we're a pretty diversified operation. Um, the crops that you can eat, we grow some vegetables and some hazelnuts, but mostly we're a seed farm, so we grow different types of grass seed, vegetable seeds, and also clover and wheat for seed. And is there anything, I mean, unique or anything different that you guys do that stands out from others? Um, I think just being so diversified, you know, although in Oregon it's really common to have a multitude of crops on your farm, but we've, we've always tried to look ahead and, and see what the next good crop for our ground is going to be. Um, we're always open to trying new things and luckily with, you know, some irrigation that we have and some of the great soil that we have, we're able to really diversify and um, and keep up with the changing times of what crops are good and what markets are good. What is the significance about what you guys do? I mean, a lot of people don't know about agriculture. They don't know what, where this is all going and how this helps them personally. So, I mean, what is that significance? Well, I think that everyone needs to eat, you know, and people, they overlook the fact that they go to the grocery store and they buy food and they don't realize how much work and time and effort goes in and how much risk the farmers take getting that food to their table. And so I think that people miss that as they become more disconnected from the farm. You know, people now are two to three generations away from the farm. And whereas if you yourself was growing up on a farm, you would understand some of those risks and, and what it takes to really, you know, be successful in this business. And it's not easy. You know, we, like I said, we take on a lot of risk and a lot of that has to do with the weather. A lot of it has to do with markets that we can't control and consumer demand. So there's so much that we try to control, but there's a lot that we can't. And what does it mean to you personally to be involved in Oregon agriculture? I think it's great. I think Oregon has a great history and a legacy of just being really good stewards of the land. We're really blessed with the climates that we have here. Not every piece of Oregon is the same. We're really diversified. We have high desert. We have, you know, areas that are great for raising cattle. We have areas that are great for raising seed crops. So I think that's one of the best parts is just how diversified this state is and how we're able to all work together and, and work towards a good coexistence of working together. And um, you're involved in the Marion County Farm Bureau, the Oregon Young Ran Farmers and Ranchers. You were named one of America's best young farmers. Um, tell me a little bit about what all that means to you and how you're using it in your daily life. It means a lot to me. I think that being involved is so important. Um, you know, there's only a small percentage of us that are farmers here in Oregon, but we make up a large percent of the economy here. And so I think that you know, we need to stand up and we need to tell people our story and let them know what we're doing out here. Transparency has become a huge issue um, all over. You know, with the internet, people want to be able to research your farm and they want to be able to tell you sometimes how to farm. And, you know, we need to take it upon ourselves as an industry to really step out there and really, you know, do things like the Volcanoes are doing with this baseball game and saying that, you know, we're here and we're proud of what we're doing and, and you know, we want to be your source. We don't want you to... Google it. We want you to come and talk to your local farmer about it.
And is there anything else for your vision for the future of Oregon agriculture? I mean, what are your personal goals? Do you, if you were to talk to someone who didn't know anything about Oregon agriculture, what would you say? And how would you bring this into, I mean, Volcanoes Baseball? I think that um, to continue to keep Oregon agriculture vital, it's really important that we just keep working together as an industry. Um, you know, because we're so diverse, it's really easy to point fingers at other farmers, and I think that that's a really hard, hard thing to do when there's so few of us. We need to really work together um, and and find what's best for Oregon as a whole. Um, you know, Volcanoes Baseball. I think they've done a great job of bringing the community together. They give us opportunities to come out and tell our story, and they give us that chance to really be, um, to really show that we're proud of what we do in our industry and on our farms.